Thank you very much, everyone, and good evening. My name is Aaron Furchette, and I'm the editorial page editor for the Herald News, on whose behalf I would like to welcome you here to Cuss Middle School here in Fall River. Also, welcome to our online viewers on heraldnews.com, as well as on FRC TV and uh, FRG TV, to our debate here for Office of the Mayor of Fall River. I'd like to include a special thank you to Superintendent of Schools Meg Mayo Brown, Cuss Middle School Principal Nancy Mullen, and the school's facilities department for making this beautiful space here available to us. So, here's how tonight's debate will work. Candidates will begin with three minute opening statements, the order of which was predetermined by coin toss. Then the questioning begins. The format will be cross-questioning style, also known as Lincoln Douglas. The candidate being questioned will be given two minutes to respond, followed by one minute rebuttal from the opposing candidate who posed the question. Now in the spirit of genuine debate, I will have the discretion to allow a 30 second further response from the candidate who was questioned, and to allow debate on an issue to proceed even further. I will endeavor to keep candidates on topic, and I'll stop them if they deviate too far off topic. Finally, we'll complete the debate with three minute closing statements, the order of which was also predetermined by coin toss. Now for a little bit of housekeeping, if everyone would please silence their cell phones right now, that would be great. And I am also asking that you hold your applause and remarks until the end of the debate out of fairness for both candidates, with the exception of right now, as I introduce tonight's candidates for the office of Mayor of Fall River. On the left, we have Mayor Will Flanagan, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to his right, opponent Kathy Ann Viveros. Enthusiastic responses, again, please allow that to be the only enthusiastic response until the, after the debate's over. Now, the first opening statement will be delivered by Mayor Flanagan, as determined by coin toss. Thank Mayor. you. I want to first begin by thanking the Herald News for hosting tonight's debate. And I also want to thank the citizens of our community for being engaged here tonight. Just a little less than two years ago, I was sworn into office. And at that time, we were on a city of, on, on the brink. We had six years of outstanding audits, and the Department of Revenue was threatening a state takeover. Our educational system was being oversawn by the DESE, and the DESE was threatening a state takeover of our school system. We had massive cuts in both the police department and the fire department. And over the last two years, we have made some drastic improvements in all of those areas. We were able to complete six years of outstanding audits in less than two. And the Department of Revenue is no longer threatening receivership of our city. We were able to complete a number of the recovery areas in our school system. And just recently, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has stated that they are no longer threatening to take over our school system. By working together, we were able to achieve the largest safer grant in the nation, $10.8 million to restaff our fire department. And we recently just announced the hiring of 26 police officers to the Forever Police Department, which will be the largest hiring in recent history. Now that doesn't happen by accident, and no one person can take sole responsibility for that. It happens due to the hard work of our community. Now when the lights go out, there are some like my opponent who curse the darkness. And then there's others like us who light the candle and lead the way. And together we are making improvements in our city. We're fighting hard to create jobs. We're fighting hard to improve our school system. We're fighting hard to improve public safety. And in a long time, We've seen our neighborhood groups come together like they've never come together before. And I'll be the first to admit I'm not perfect. I've made my fair share of mistakes over the last year and a half. 
but I learn from those mistakes. I see the error of my ways and know not to make that same mistake twice. Unfortunately, there's no book on how to be mayor of the city of Fall River. There's no other job that I'd rather be doing than being the mayor of this city, and I look forward to tonight's debate, given the opportunity to set the record straight. Once again, I want to thank the Herald News for hosting tonight's debate, and I want to thank each and every one of the citizens of our community for tuning in or being here in person. Thank you, and God bless. No applause, please. Mrs. Viveros, you may now deliver your opening statement. I too would like to thank the Fall River Herald News as well as our FRC and FRG cable television stations for hosting this evening's debate. And I also want to welcome everyone who's here in attendance as well as those who are viewing this evening's debate from the comfort of their own home. You are all watching this debate because you are concerned about our city. We all know that Fall River is experiencing rising unemployment because unfortunately the jobs are leaving Fall River faster than they are being created. We are seeing a rise in not only assaults but other crimes within our community and it's just not the Fall River that we have come to know and love. We have a great many people in our community who are either unemployed or underemployed who are struggling to either meet a mortgage payment or rental payment. And these people need relief. This is not the Fall River that you and I have known in our lifetimes. Throughout this campaign, I have said over and over again that there is no good reason why Fall River should fall behind every other city and town in Massachusetts when they are moving ahead. I stand before you tonight offering a new job creation, job protection strategy that I believe will get our existing businesses involved and help us to turn the tide on the rising unemployment. I stand before you as a businesswoman who has been in the private sector and knows that there are management tools and programs that we can use in our local government to make it more efficient, to bring down the cost of government. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing my taxes go up and seeing my police and DPW and educational services go down. Folks, we have a $235 million budget it's time we make it work for all of us. As the first woman mayor of Fall River, I will bring a sense of urgency to the matter of crime within our community. We need to make our city clean and safe yet again. As a mother and former teacher, I will bring the passion and leadership necessary to provide quality education to all our children within the Fall River Public Schools. This election is about trust. You must decide which of us you will trust with our city's future. I will provide the leadership we need, and I promise you, I will never betray your trust. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. And now the debate begins, and again determined by coin toss, the first question will be asked by Mayor Flanagan. Thank you, Aaron. Mrs. Viveros, Meditech is threatening to leave our region within the next 30 to 60 days if they are unable to reach an agreement with the MHC. If Meditech leaves our area, it will be a loss of over 800 new jobs for our region. Do you know the name of Meditech's CEO? And what have you done to convince him to stay here in our region? Mr. Flanagan, you seem to have a difficulty understanding that you were elected mayor of Fall River and I am a private citizen. And the best way to solve a problem is not to have created it in the first place. I firmly believe that had our biopark been under construction when Meditech was looking for an opportunity to expand, they would have been located in our biopark, which was fully funded, fully permitted, 
And I represent to you that the shovel would have been in the ground as we speak. So we would not have 800 jobs at risk. And a half a million dollars in real estate taxes would be coming in to the city of Fall River. I hope that we do not lose Meditech because it was our opportunity to restructure the Fall River economy. You chose instead to pursue an illegal casino. So we now are confronted with this problem. And as mayor, I will do everything I possibly can to assure that Meditech remains in the greater Fall River region and provides us with the jobs that are so very important to this community. Now there's one more point to that. Meditech is very important. And I know that when they announced that the deal in Freetown was about to fail, you were in the Herald News indicating that you were going to approach Meditech and ask them about coming into our biopark. So all that talk we heard about how they didn't want to be near the landfill, that didn't bother you when the Freetown project was at risk and you decided to try yet again to get them to come to Fall River. I respectfully suggest that Meditech hopefully will remain in our That's region. Mrs. Viveros, and uh, any rebuttal, Mr. Mayor? Yes, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Viveros, the CEO of Meditech is Neil Papalato, and your statements are simply not true. As the mayor of the city, I have been in contact with Meditech. I've been in contact with Secretary Galvin. I've been in contact with the MHC. I've been in contact with Jim McGovern and Bonnie Frank and John Kerry and Scott Brown in order to fight to keep Meditech here. And I understand I'm the mayor. People voted from the city of Fall River to elect me to serve as their mayor. But as a private citizen, you can be doing so much more. Let me tell you about private citizens who have stepped up to the table to fight for Meditech to be here. People like Alex Stylos from WSAR who have uh, written letters to Meditech. Business owners like Jim Caram who have come up to the forefront to fight to keep Meditech here in our region. So you're just not a private citizen, Mrs. Viveris. You're a former city councilor elected to over eight years to the city council, and you're also running for the highest office in our city. And I would expect you to do more Thank to keep you. this project here. Thank you, here. Mr. Mayor. Uh, any further response, Mrs. Viveros? No. Moving on, uh, your question, please, for the mayor, Mrs. Viveros. During your campaign in 2009, Mr. Flanagan, you criticized former Mayor Bob Correa for having a bloated law department. The Correa Law Department's salary budget was $287,000. Your law department's salary budget is $421,000. That's an increase of $134,000. How do you justify your own bloat? Mrs. Viveris, once again, simply not true. I have here in my hand a graph of the total law department budget cost from fiscal year 2007 to fiscal year 2012. Total salaries, total expenses, total budget costs. And I've also put together a graph, and I'll show it to everybody here as well as you. 2007, 2008, 2009, we see a spike in expenses and salaries. 2010, it's gone down. 2011, it's also gone down. And 2012, it's increased slightly. Our legal department salaries, expenses, and costs are less than that of Mayor Careers and that of Mayor Lambert's. And I'm not criticizing those former administrations. I'm just pointing out the facts. See, over these last nine months, my opponent has attacked me, saying that we have a bloated legal department budget. The facts aren't true. Our legal department is actually costing less than two previous mayors. And what we're continuing to do is handle the majority of our cases in-house, whether it's fighting against the strip club, whether it's fighting to keep LNG out of the city of Fall River, or whether it's fighting for workers' rights out on the work sites. Our legal department has been working full time for, on behalf of the citizens of Fall River. So, Mr. Viveris, I disagree with your statement. I have the numbers in front of me. I put together a graph, and the total expenses of our legal department is less than that of the previous two mayors. Rebuttal? Yes, thank you. 
Mr. Flanagan, the budget has been realigned in the last few years, and it has actually altered the location of the health insurance and other related costs. The fact is, your corporation counsel got a $35,000 raise. Your assistant corporation counsel got an $11,000 raise. And you hired a new attorney who is being paid $20,000 a year for working one day a week. Your, administrator, uh, your administration lost the responsible employer ordinance to cost us $200,000. You directed the casino lawsuit that we also lost in court for a cost of over $100,000. And I would add that it was your corporation counsel that directed a failed effort at auctioning school buildings that has brought us today where only two buildings have been sold and we continue to pay a large maintenance expense for vacant school buildings. Thank you, Mr. Viveros. Any further response, Mayor? Thank you. You know, Mr. Viveros is pointing out that salaries have gone up in the legal department. What I'm saying is that the total cost of our department has gone down. But even if salaries gone up, and let's say even if Mrs. Viveros is correct, and I disagree with her, let's take her back to when she was a city councilor. She voted to give the corporate counselor at that time a $20,000 raise at the cost of police officers and firefighters and Excuse teachers me, being laid off. please hold your applause, folks. No, please hold your applause. Not under no. our administration. Again, I will remind the audience to hold your applause. I know that sometimes you may hear things that you want to applaud for, uh, but this is not the time or the place. Thank you. Um, any further response on your part? The increase that you speak of, Mr. Flanagan, was because at the time, the Corporation Council was earning less than the Assistant Corporation Council. And in management circles, we find that it's best if the senior person in the department makes more money than the junior person in the department. But even with that raise, that individual's only making $77,000 per year, still far less than the raise that you would Thank have you, given Mrs. to Viveros. your corporation council. I, I think we can move on to another question at this point. Mayor Flanagan. Thank you. As an elected official, Mrs. Viveris, you co-authored an agreement that increased the amount of public housing at Watapa Heights and committed $4 million of public funding to replicate public housing throughout the city of Fall River. Why did you co-author such an agreement without any public input? Mr. Flanagan, that is just not true. And I'm disappointed Audience. you would make such a statement. The fact is, the agreement that was brought to the City Council from the state and negotiated by uh, the tenant organization provided for 60 subsidized units at the Watapa site. We negotiated that number down to 26. The agreement that came from the state provided for a minimum of $4 million in home loan funds and others. We negotiated that number to up two. But more importantly, if you weren't happy with the memorandum of agreement that was negotiated by the former administration, why didn't you change it? You were given that MOA in February of 2010. You had lots of time to renegotiate it. Later on in that year, you were given a housing improvement plan that was developed. That current housing improvement plan calls for 50 subsidized rental units. Again, you were silent. And it was only recently when I did call neighbors together, when we did have a community meeting, and those neighbors finally had a voice and they spoke loud and clear. They want to see 26 single-family homes for veterans, for disabled veterans and then veterans returning. That's the plan that we want to see at Watapa Heights. And because you've waited to the last minute, that alternative is now in jeopardy. You've run out of extensions, Mr. Flanagan. The state wants a housing improvement plan on their desk by December the 9th. When were you going to ask the residents of the city of Fall River what they wanted? 
Mayor, your response. Former Council of Barberas, you put forth a plan when you were an elected official that had zero public input in it. You're not denying co-authoring that agreement. In fact, you co-authored it with another city councilor. If you were so concerned about having public input in that MOA or in that housing improvement plan, you had the opportunity to do so when it was being drafted, and you failed to do so. You didn't allow the public hearings that you had out in the Niagara neighborhood that you just recently had as you're a candidate for mayor. In fact, I'm seeing a pattern develop here. Candidate Ververis does one thing, and elected official Ververis does another. And there's a stark contradiction between the two of them. If you wanted to have public input, you would have had it when the agreement was written. You did not have public input in that agreement, and now you're doing it right be two weeks before an election. And that's simply wrong. Simply wrong, Mrs. Viveris. And your response, Mrs. Viveris. Well, once again, Mr. Flanagan, that is simply not true. We had a meeting with the Fall River City Council's Housing Committee. We invited everyone from the community to come forward. I personally put together a PowerPoint presentation outlining the project as we envisioned it. So we had every opportunity for public input and I might ask you, Mr. Flanagan, what were you doing as the private citizen at that time? Had you been paying attention, you that's, would have known we had a meeting. That's the end of the question, Mrs. Viveros. You asked the question. Would you like to respond, Mayor? I can move on to the next one. Sorry? We can move on to the next Thank question. You. Moving on. Mrs. Viveros, your question. Mr. Flanagan, during your 2009 campaign, you criticized former Mayor Correa for issuing one gag order. You promised that you would promote a transparent government. However, during your first term, you instituted two gag orders that stopped department heads from speaking with city councilors, Please get to the question, media, Mrs. and residents. When you were confronted with the second gag order, the Herald News caught you in a lie. Why should the people of Fall River believe what you say? I'm going to do something you typically don't hear like the officials do. I'm going to tell you I made a mistake. Implementing that gag order was a mistake on our department heads. It was the wrong thing to do. And after I had a moment of reflection on it and thought it through, we quickly reversed it. Now that's the gag order on the department heads. We made a mistake. I'm sorry. And I admit that mistake. But well, let's focus the one that was occurring during the hurricane. That one I don't regret, and let me tell you why. We had possibly a level two hurricane battling down on the northeast. And I felt it was very important that any communications that go to the citizens of our community be done so in one voice, and that be the voice of the mayor of our city. That way we did not have any discrepancies and information that came out to the citizens. God forbid if one official gave the wrong address of a shelter and somebody was injured on their way to that wrong address. God forbid if somebody said a bridge was closed and in fact it wasn't and somebody tried an alternate route to get to safety. I was wrong in the first place and I admit it, but in the second place we did what was right for our community. But you wanna talk about gag orders Mrs. Viveris, why did you, during the time when the fire chief was being switched from a civil service to mayoral appointment, stop any public input at a city council meeting? Over 8,000 to 10,000 citizens signed a petition. Citizens packed that council chamber to have their voices be heard. And you voted in the majority vote to stop citizens' input on something that a petition was signed for. So if you want to talk gag orders, you know all about them. Your response, Mrs. Viveros. Please hold your applause, audience. Your gag order, Mr. Flanagan, stopped the Director of Emergency Management Services, the liaison to FEMA, from speaking to the media. So I have a problem with that. But even more importantly, even if we give you the fact that you were just trying to maintain control. 
The problem I mentioned is, when you were confronted about that gag order, which threatened disciplinary action, I might add, you denied it. And it wasn't until the Herald News presented you with an actual printed memo that you decided to admit that, yes, you had issued a gag order. Yeah. And as the editorial mentioned, it wasn't what you did, but the fact that you tried to cover it up. How can we trust a mayor who can lie about something so important and then add insult to injury by covering it up? That's the Thank crime, you, Mrs. Viveros. Mr. Flanagan. Uh, any response, Mayor? I disagree with that, Mrs. Viveros. Where we disagreed with the Herald News was over the word threatened. I didn't threaten anybody. I told the department heads who report to me, if you disseminate any information, you're going to be disciplined. And I wanted to make sure that I was very clear with them how serious this situation was. And when the Herald News reporter asked me if I threatened anybody, I told him no. I didn't threaten anybody. And then he showed me the document, and I agreed with the document and what was said in, in it. But we disagreed over the word threatened. I didn't threaten anybody. The re department heads report to the mayor, Stop. and that's the way it was. I can Thank you. It. Sorry. Mayor Flanagan, keep me honest. I appreciate I'll that. Try to pay attention. <laughs> Mrs. Viveris, as an elected official, you introduced an adult entertainment zone to the city council. That included land in both the Niagara and Maplewood neighborhoods. Do you still support adult entertainment being established in these neighborhoods? No, I don't, Mr. Flanagan. And actually, there was a subsequent proposal presented over near the police station that I thought was actually a much better option. Now, let's talk about adult entertainment. This is clearly something that no community wants. And if we can keep it out, Believe me, I would fight as hard as anybody to do just that. The problem is, these folks have a constitutional right. And my effort was to finally put the issue to rest. And I spoke to the members of the Neighborhood Association, and I promised to them that as mayor, I would convene a meeting of all neighbors so that we could come up with something we could tolerate. There will never be an adult entertainment zone that we like, but we need something we can tolerate simply to put the, the matter to rest. Now that issue is still before the courts, and there's been no decision rendered. And I'm not so certain that we're going to win that case. But nonetheless, we won't know until the courts have ruled. But my firm belief is we have to make a decision and move on. Because if we don't, some developer is going to decide where they want to put adult entertainment. And when they win in court, the judge is going to let them put it where they want it to go, not where we want it to go. I want to be proactive on this issue. I want to decide what's best what is the least offensive location within the city of Fall River, and I plan to do it with neighborhood input, as I've represented to them. You, Mr. Flanagan, have chosen to simply run it out in the courts, and heaven knows what that's likely to cost us. But nonetheless, that's the it. problem Thank has you, not Viveros. gone away. Response, Mayor? Mrs. Viveros, your proposal to put it on Pleasant Street actually would have taken away parkland parkland that is used on a daily basis by the people of our community. So if you don't support it going in the Niagara neighborhood anymore, and if you don't support it going in the Maplewood neighborhood anymore, where do you suggest it goes? Where do you suggest it goes, Mrs. Viveros? Mr. Flanagan, the developer was not going to take any parklands. That is simply not Your proposal true. did, though. My proposal was time, to allow him to locate behind the Fall River Police Station figuring it was the safest place. If we had to have it, that's where it was intended to go. Thank you. Let's move on. Uh, Mrs. Viveros, your question for the mayor. In your current campaign literature, Mr. Flanagan, you claim that during my term as a city councilor, 
I allowed the frivolous spending of $11 million in budget surplus in two years. Please identify those specific expenditures that you believe are frivolous. Ms. Rivera's, when Ed Lambert left office, there was $11 million in free cash in the city of Fall River. You were elected to serve on the city council with eight other members, and a new mayor was sworn into office. In two years, $11 million in cash disappeared, cash that our citizens would definitely want to have today in the city's treasury. As a city councilor, you voted on a number of transfers, transfers for computer software, transfers for improvements. Mayor, Mrs. Riveros asked about specific expenditures. Please answer Thank the you. question. Specific expenditures yeah. were transfers on computer software, transfers on improvements to City Hall, transfers on uh, compensation packages to employees that were laid off. When that $11 million was going down, do you want to know what else was going down to? Staffing in education, staffing in DPW, and staffing in public safety. So, Mr. Rivera, you had a fiduciary duty to protect that $11 million, and you failed in your fiduciary duty. Response? Well, Mr. Flanagan, that was a, a fairly weak response regarding where our tax dollars went. But let me tell you what we spent those monies on. Sidewalk, street repair, pothole repair, snow removal, financial services to balance the cash accounts within the city of Fall River. We bought fire engines and police trucks. We bought recycling trucks and bins to start recycling in the city of Fall River, a program that may finally be going citywide. We used $1.6 million in unemployment to cover unemployment compensation for the municipal police and fire workers who were laid off. Ladies and gentlemen, we spent that money in the best interest of the city of Fall River. And Mr. Flanagan, for you to call those items frivolous is unresponsible. Mayor, any response? Mr. Ferreras, the majority of that $11 million was spent on consultants, consultants that the private, previous administration hired to come in and get our financial house in order. Well, they failed at that, too, because when I was sworn into office, there was still six years of outstanding orders that needed to be completed. Cash was still not being reconciled on time, and envelopes sat uncashed of property taxes on the collector's desk. All corrections we had to make in the last year and a half. Some of that money was spent on the sources you indicated in your statement, but the majority of it wasn't. That's all the time we have for this question. Let's move on. Uh, Mayor Flaney, your question for Mrs. Viveros, please. Councilor Viveros, four of our elementary schools did not make AYP this year. Do you know the names of these four schools? And if elected, what will you do to provide assistance to these schools to ensure they make AYP? Mr. Flanagan, we have great many schools in our system that are not achieving to full potential. Approximately 50% of our students are not getting passing grades in English language arts. I see a problem is not peculiar to any one school. I see a problem that's peculiar to our system overall. My plan for education is to get more dollars into direct services within the classroom, to cut some of the administrative expenses, and to get the children in every single school throughout this community achieving at a level that is acceptable. I prefer to look at all schools. I have proposed a literacy challenge whereby we can take an MCAS statistic. 64% of our fourth graders in 2010 did not pass the reading test. This will not stand as mayor. It's important that we not channel large sums of money into some schools while other students in other schools remain lacking in what they need. I prefer site-based management. I want our teachers and our principals and our parents to decide that the resources they need 
to educate their children. You, on the other hand, Mr. Flanagan, seem to support the top-down strategy for education. I do not. I want the schools to tell me the resources they need, and I want to provide those resources to them so we can finally provide quality education to all the students in this Fall River public school system, not those who have been targeted by the state of Massachusetts. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros, and your rebuttal, Mayor. Ms. Viveros, the four elementary schools that did not make AYP this year were Fonseca, Watson, Doran, and Viveros. Now let me tell you what our school system has been doing to make improvements in these schools. We've been working with the administrators and the teachers and the parents to have a recovery plan for each and every single one of these schools. We've been bringing in programs like Reading Street and Read 180 to help these elementary students achieve literacy by the time they get to the third grade. But Mr. Veras, one of the things I also notice has been your absence from the school committee meetings. In the last year and a half, we've had probably over 20 meetings. And of those meetings, I believe you only attended three of them. And two of the three, you either came early or left late. So your absence in education has been greatly noted uh, during this entire process. And if you're running for the top position of the city of Fall River, you need to be more actively involved in the community. Your response. Mr. Flanagan, I, I guess I've gotten very comfortable watching you on cable television. <laughs> so I, I sit at home and I watch the meetings and I assure you, I get every bit of the detail that's needed. But to your point, Mr. Flanagan, you talked about the troubled schools. I'm going to direct your attention to the Tansy Elementary School. I've spoken to many of the parents at Tansy, and they are not happy with the decline in education for their students in that school. Thank you. It's an important topic. If you want to continue, you can, Mayor. Thank you. And you know, Ms. Ferraris, Ms. Ferraris makes a joke uh, about me being on cable TV, but you know, the fact of the matter is, this is a serious topic. It's Audience. serious because if you're watching the meetings at Audience. home, I'm you cannot me. add public input. It, you cannot have your voice be heard during citizens' input time. You don't see what happens at these meetings because you're not present at the meetings. And we've been working hard to make improvements at Tansy, Mrs. Rivera's. We've been investing within that school, and we're seeing results in that school. Test scores have been up in Tansy. And just two weeks ago, I did a walk to school with Tansy, where I walked to the school with the parents and the teachers so I, and the students. Thank I've you, been Mayor. involved in that school, Mr. Veris. You haven't been. Education is an important issue. I'll allow the discussion to continue if the candidates would like to continue it. And I will also, I would like to warn uh, any audience members to hold your comments, please. I heard some very rude comments, and I'm not going to tolerate it. Uh, are we going to continue with the education discussion, or shall we move on? Capable of moving on. We can move on then. I believe we're up to Mayor Flanagan's question for Mrs. Viveros. I think that was it. I asked Thank one about schools not making. Thank you. I lost welcome. track. Mrs. Viveros, your question for the mayor, please. Thank you. During your campaign in 2009, Mr. Flanagan, you called the stormwater fee an illegal rain tax, and you promised it would be eliminated. People trusted you, Mr. Flanagan. And they believed that when you said it was illegal, it was illegal because you're a lawyer. We still have your I illegal tax. Is it legal now? Mayor? Ms. Rivera's, I'm going to be crystal clear on this subject because I know it's one of your talking points during the campaign. I do not agree with the stormwater fee, and in my opinion, it's illegal. And as the mayor of this community, I have fought hard to either have it repealed or reduced. When I was elected mayor, we had a $3.5 million budget deficit in our sewer account, a deficit which the DOR mandated that we fix. And at that time, I requested that the city council repeal the stormwater fee, and they voted not to do so. This year, I requested that the city council, in setting the fee, 
reduce the stormwater fee from $35 to $30. Once again, they voted no. As the mayor of this city, I've been fighting hard to correct that unjust fee. A fee, I remind you, City Council of Rivera's voted for to put into effect. And I've also been to Washington, D.C. to meet with our congressional and our Senate leaders to see if they can provide some federal assistance to reduce this fee. I work with our legislators like Mike Rodericks and Dave Sullivan and Paul Schmidt and Kevin Aguiar to get some state assistance to fix this fee. So we're working on it. It's not as if, as Mr. Rivera's claims, I said one thing and did another once I get into office. I've been working very hard to get this fee either eliminated or reduced. And there's been some stumbling blocks along the way, but I'm not giving up to get this fee reduced, Mrs. Viveros, and we're gonna get it fixed sooner or later. Your rebuttal, Mrs. Viveros. If you, I'm sorry, I think we had a little bit of time left. Or... All set, Mayor? Thank you. Mrs. Viveros. In the April 12th edition of the Fall River Herald News, your Corporation Counsel, Stephen Torres, said that the illegal stormwater fee was now legal. So if you have a differing opinion, you are certainly entitled to that. You made a great case about all the people that you've talked to, Mr. Flanagan. But me, I'm about results. We still have that illegal stormwater fee. And your proposal in January of 2010 that you submitted to the City Council I am so pleased that they voted it down. A single family home would pay an extra $364 per year. A two family home would pay an extra $868 per year. And a business like the Fall River Shopping Center would save $44,000 per year. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. Any response to that, Mayor? Would you like to move on? Go on to the next question. Okay, your question for Mrs. Viveros, please. Your current political advertisements indicate that you are pro-business and that you will not raise license or permit fees. However, when you were an elected official, you voted to raise the fees associated with over 200 licenses and permits. Why does your actions contradict your words, Mr. Viveros? Response? Those fees were adjusted, Mr. Flanagan, after many years uh, of remaining constant. And when we got in to office, we felt that it was necessary to adjust those fees. So they were competitive with the same fee structure that was being provided in all the other cities and towns in the state of Massachusetts. So we were striving for equity. You, on the other hand, Mr. Flanagan, continue to do all you can to raise the costs for the people in this community. You've raised real estate taxes to the max, not one, but two years in a row. You have increased the water rates, you have increased the sewer rates, and you have done absolutely nothing about the illegal stormwater fee. There is a time for equity, Mr. Flanagan, and there is a time to stop. And I might add, that if, we have always Mrs. Tried. Viveros, if you could answer the question about your pro-business stances, which is what the mayor had Certainly. asked. Thank you. Businesses understand, Mr. Flanagan, that they have to be partners in the, in the financial solvency of this community. And when we passed those fee increases, I didn't hear any objections from businesses. They understood it was the responsible thing to do. So it was not anti-business. It was not pro-business. It was just the right thing to do to give relief to the taxpayers of the city of Fall River as it was an alternate form of revenue that needed to be adjusted simply to remain competitive with the other cities and towns. And we took that opportunity. I stand by that vote. Your rebuttal, Mayor. Once again, this goes with the theme I've outlined earlier in this debate. Candidate Viveris says one thing, but elected official Viveris does another. The fees went up, Mrs. Viveris. Taxes have gone up. Well, let me tell you why. They've gone up because on your watch, $11 million in free cash was spent. On your watch, 
a multi-million dollar deficit occurred in the sewer department. On your watch, you've done nothing or did nothing to protect the treasury of our city. And our administration had to make the tough decisions to balance a budget. Our administration had to make the tough decisions to balance the sewer and the water department budgets. Because of your inactions as a city councilor, our administration had to take action once elected. I'll allow a response, Mrs. Viveros. Mr. Flanagan, during my service on the floor of a city council in 2009, which accounted for a good amount of that expenditure that you refer to as frivolous, we faced nine C cuts. The state of Massachusetts, midway through the year, said, Fall River, you will cut your budget. And we did what we could to survive. And I would add that that $3.5 million deficit that you talk about was due in large part because people didn't thank pay you, that Viveros. illegal stormwater fee. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. Further response, Mayor, or would you like to move on? No, further response. Thank you, Aaron. Ms. Viveros, mm -hmm. the deficit that occurred in the stormwater, in the, in the sewer department, occurred because it was an election year and elected officials didn't want to raise the rates in an election year. And as a city councilor, you had the opportunity to question the department heads when they came before you, to ask them about any deficits that occurred in those accounts. And you failed to do so. You had the opportunity to set the record straight, Thank you, Mr. Viveris. Thank you. I'll allow it to continue. Mr. Flanagan. You disrupted my train of thought. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> that's how it works. Uh, we can Mr. move on if you prefer. Yes. Uh, no, actually, uh, no, sure. Let's move on. Thank you. Okay. Move on it is. Ball's in your court, Mrs. Viveros. Uh, your question for the mayor, please. In your campaign literature, Mr. Flanagan, and I might add, there's a good deal of difference between candidate Flanagan and Mayor Flanagan. You said that you balanced two city budgets. Let's look at the facts. Your current budget has an IOU of $1.2 million to the school department. That's not a balanced budget. You're making a statement, not a question, Mrs. Viveros. Last year, uh, the city budget was out of balance by $3.5 million with a deficit of $770,000 in the retirement account and $717,000 in disallowed meals tax. And that was one of the reasons that the DOI did not set the tax rate. How can you say you balanced two budgets? I've had several conversations with the Department of Revenue, conversations as early as last week. And the Department of Revenue is satisfied with the documentation our administration has put forth to them. Now, Ms. Viveris indicates a $1.2 million commitment letter to the Florida school system. It's true, we did write that commitment letter. And it's also true that our legislature and our governor approved uh, over $1.2 million uh, in a supplemental budget. That money is coming due November 1st. As soon as that money is received, it's going to be transferred immediately over to the Florida School Department to close any deficit that may or may not exist within that department. Now, Ms. Viveris talks about the retirement pension. Our administration, once it was notified of a deficit in the retirement account, a deficit that occurred for many years in the city of Fall River, not just in the last two, I might add. We put forth a schedule working with PERAC and the retirement board to cure that deficit in the retirement account. I'm proud of the work our financial team has done in the city of Fall River. We've been able to balance the budgets, and might I add, we've been able to balance them without laying off firefighters or police officers or teachers or DPW workers. Our administration in our city has been getting stronger over the last year and a half, despite what my opponent may say. Your rebuttal. Thank you. Mr. Flanagan, when you talk about that $1.2 million, the school department began spending that money before there was a commitment obtained as to where that money was coming from. I'm very grateful to our state legislators and to the governor for providing those additional funds. But at the time you submitted that budget, 
we did not have those funds in place. That, to me, is not a balanced budget. The state legislature saved you, and we are fortunate that that happened. Thank you. Mayor Flanagan, your question for Mrs. Viveros, please. Mrs. Viveros, our school district just named three new principals at the Green Elementary School, the Henry Law Middle School, and the Stone Therapeutic Day School. Do you know the names of these three principals? And what have you done to welcome them into our school district? Audience, audience, come on. Well, let me say this, Mr. Flanagan. I know the audience, name. Audience, please. We're trying to focus on the debate, not what you have to say. Thank you. I know the name of the principal who is not at the Green School, the name of the principal that was doing a very good job and hoping for a permanent appointment at that school, the principal who was extremely well liked and respected by the neighborhood association, by the parents, by the teachers, by everyone in that school. I know the name of that principal, Mr. Flanagan. She's now teaching out of town because she couldn't get the permanent appointment. So let's not talk about who we have. Let's finally address the fact that a great many capable, qualified teachers and administrators are leaving the Fall River public school system. I hear it time and time again that the good people in our system are leaving because they're not able to be creative in their classroom. They're not able to seize the moment, the teachable moment, when a child wants to learn because they're not being allowed to do true site-based management within the educational classroom. I was a teacher, Mr. Flanagan. I know what it takes to spark the interest of a child, to motivate a child to learn. And it's all about the staff that's in those schools. And it's all about restoring morale within our school system and holding on to the best and the brightest teachers and administrators within our system. And right now, frankly, I don't see that happening. Rebuttal, Mayor. Ms. Rivera's the principal's names are uh, Mary Ellen Shore, Cheryl Bliss, and Joel Jocelyn. And as a private citizen, there is so much you could do to welcome these principals into our community. Let me tell you what the Niagara Neighborhood Association did to welcome Mr. Joel Jocelyn into their community. Principal Jocelyn had a meet and greet at the Green Elementary School, and the Niagara Neighborhood Association stepped up to the plate. People like Helen Rigo and Dino Bizarro and John Sylvia, who I see here tonight engaged in the community, did a pencil drive to make sure that students had pencils when they came to school ready to learn. Small things like that, Mrs. Rose, make a big difference in our community. And I understand you're a private citizen, and you've used that line a number of times here tonight, but as a private citizen, as a former elected official, and as a candidate for mayor of the city of Fall River, you can be doing so much more to improve the quality of life of the people in this community. Let's move on this, to another question. Let's move on to another question. Uh, Mrs. Viveros, what's your question for Mayor Flanagan? The Fall River Office of Economic Development is responsible for any and all aspects of economic development in Fall River. Lately, this organization, and more specifically, its executive director, have been criticized for not doing enough to bring jobs to Fall River. Are you satisfied with this executive's performance at the Fall River Office of Economic Development? No, I am not satisfied, and you shouldn't be either. We have the second highest unemployment rate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's a statistic that none of us should be satisfied with. And I disagree with you. Fall River Office of Economic Development isn't responsible for all job creation in the city of Fall River. I believe the buck stops at the mayor's desk for job creation in the city of Fall River. And as the mayor of this community, there's not a day that goes by where I'm not trying to recruit a new company to our city 
or sustain the ones we already have. I can't tell you the number of times I've ran into people on the street who approach me and say, Mayor, what are you doing to get jobs here? I was working in a factory and my job is no longer there for me. Can you please help me? And those stories weigh on your mind day in and day out. And I do everything I can to recruit jobs here. In fact, that was one of the reasons why we drafted our waterfront district improvement plan, a plan which you did not support and said that you would not bring forward if you were mayor of the city of Fall River. That plan streamlined zoning along our city's waterfront in an effort to spur economic development in our city. Because when I talk to developers, when I talk to the business community, what they tell me is, Mayor, you got a beautiful city. But if I want to build something in Fall River, I have to go in front of this board, then I have to go to that board, then I have to go to this hearing, then somebody at that hearing objects, and the next thing you know, I'm hiring an attorney, and maybe five years from now, a judge might let me build a project in your city. Well, that type of red tape equals uncertainty and risk, and it's an elected official's job to do everything they can to have pre predictability and certainty in job creation, Mrs. Rivera's two aspects that you do not support. And your rebuttal, please. Mr. Flanagan, if you were not satisfied with Mr. Fiola's performance, why haven't you done something about it? I can compare us to a sports team. When the team's in last place, the manager has got to go. You have done nothing to force accountability and results out of that office. And as for your personal involvement in job creation, I was very disappointed to learn that when State Senator Michael Rodericks went to great efforts to schedule a very large and prominent meeting of all the biotech and life sciences executives in Boston, you were not there. Opportunity lost. I do agree it's the mayor's responsibility, which is why I'm putting forward the creation of a mayor's ambassador team and an outreach program that will get Fall River working again. Ms. Rivera's, let me tell you where Continue. I was on that night. I was at a school committee meeting discussing the PCB contamination of the Talbot Middle School, making sure that the children and the staff of the Talbot Middle School were not put into harm's way. So that's where I was on that night, and you were there too. However, don't try to fool the people here tonight. You know Mr. Fiola has a contract, a contract that's approved by the board members of the former Office of Economic Development. A contract that was Thank put you, into place before I was sworn into office. Further response, Mrs. Viveros. I seem to recall that biotech meeting was during the day. But I would also say to you that when it comes to Mr. Fiola, sometimes you just have to cut your losses. Tell the person who's out of work and looking for a job that you're not going oh, to yeah. take action in a department because you're concerned about buying out a contract. You didn't hesitate to fire a great many other city executives and administrators, and I respectfully suggest that Mr. Fiola's contract needs to have accountability. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. Mayor, further response, if you'd like. Ms. Viveros, let me be clear again on this issue. Job creation, job sustainability is not the sole responsibility of the former Office of Economic Development. The results lay at the desk of the mayor. And Fall River is no different than any other city or town on this globe. Every city and town you go to is struggling right now, Mrs. Viveris. We're all competing for the same jobs, for the same job market. And we have been fighting to making sure we're doing our best to bring jobs here Thank and to you, sustain mayor. the ones we already have. I'll allow uh, one more, okay. Then let's move on. I'd like to remind the candidates also that we have just about a little under a half hour left in the debate. Thank you. Uh, so we are up to Mayor Flanagan's question for Mrs. Viveros. Council of Viveros, as an elected official, you ignored a petition signed by over 8,000 citizens when you voted to change the fire chief from a civil service appointment to a mayoral appointment. 
Why did you ignore the voice of over 8,000 citizens? And why did you deny citizens' input at that city council meeting? Mr. Flanagan, there had been a number of meetings, and we heard from a great many people prior to taking that vote. But I stand by that vote. Because for the reasons I just explained regarding Mr. Fiola, I feel very strongly that the chief administrator in any department needs to be held accountable. When you grant someone life tenure in any position, it is virtually impossible to hold them to the highest standard, to expect them to follow good, sound management practices, to expect them to apply equal and fair personnel policies within their department. So I stand by that decision. But I would also tell you that we now have another vacancy in the fire chief. And so I would ask you, do you plan to revert the position back to civil service? Or are you planning to let the neighborhood associations decide who the next fire chief shall be? Ms. Rivera's. Over 8,000 citizens signed a petition. Their voices were heard. They packed that council chamber, and they wanted an opportunity to be heard on the motion. And you denied it. Those are the facts. And you are correct. We now have a vacancy as chief of the Fort Fire Department. And I have not reached a determination yet on how that position should be filled. But what I do recognize is that you cannot mix politics with public safety. And it's either reverting back to a civil service appointment or solicit the citizens of our community to assist in making that appointment. We follow a similar process when we appointed Police Chief Dan Racine, who's doing an outstanding job in serving the people of the city of Fall River. And one thing you have to recognize, Ms. Rivera's, is you can't mix politics with public safety. Thank you, Mayor. Mrs. Viveros, you had asked a question in the previous round. You can ask it again if you'd like, in, since it's your turn. A uh, question for Mayor Flanagan, please. This is a new question? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mr. Flanagan, you stated during the last campaign that you would step down as chairman of the school committee because you felt there is no room for politics in education. Diamond Regional is a great school, and it is overseen by a regional school board. Earlier this year, just an hour before a meeting in which the Diamond School Committee was to take a number of key votes, you replaced a member of the board because you did not agree with the vote he was about to take. Question, please. How do you explain this action? Diamond Vocational is a great school. It's a school that I graduated from, and it's my alma mater. And I have a lot of respect for that school, its alumni, its teachers, and its students. And the three appointments to the Diamond Vocational School Board are mayoral appointments. They're appointments made by the mayor and their actions reflect upon the mayor's office. And before a school committee meeting, I had learned that there was going to be a vote by the mayoral appointments that was going to be contradictory to, to a contract. I didn't agree with that. I thought it was the wrong thing to do. As the mayor of this city, I'm accountable to the people who elected me. And I asked the board members to put their vote off and to follow the contract that was in place. Those board members indicated to me that they would not. And one of those board members I considered to be a personal friend of mine, the same board member that I had removed. So I'm not going to allow friendships and personal feelings to get into the way of doing what's right for a school district. Personally, it bothered me to make that decision. But professionally, it was the right thing to do. And I requested that the board members follow the contract to do what was in place and to follow the procedure that had been set forth. So, Mr. Veras, I don't apologize for my actions. I did what I thought was right for that school 
and for the citizens of our community. And if I had the opportunity to do it, I would do it again. Rebuttal. Mr. Flanagan, you appointed the individual in question. He was your choice. You didn't feel it necessary to give him the freedom and the flexibility to exercise his good judgment. I find your actions one of the worst abuses of power that a mayor could demonstrate. The individual in Audience. question. Audience, no applause, please. Gave a statement to the Herald News saying, I am replaced because I am not voting the way the mayor wants. As mayor, I will be appointing qualified individuals to every board, and I will give them the freedom and flexibility to do what they feel is right. That's how we foster teamwork. That's how we bring the talent from throughout this community together to make Fall River a better place. And not everybody has the same opinion. Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. Mayor Flanagan, your question for your opponent. Ms. Rivera's, yesterday I had the opportunity to speak with one of our senior citizens who lives in the Flint. She was over 80 years old and she regularly uses the post office in the Flint neighborhood. However, she is very concerned that the federal government may be closing the Flint post office in the near future with its budget cuts. What have you done recently to help keep the post office and the Flint open? There you are again, Mr. Flanagan, confusing the fact that I am a private citizen and you are the elected mayor. And I've heard a great deal about all the people that you called and all the letters that you wrote. Where are the results? You do a good job at getting out there and championing a cause, but it is about results. But I'm gonna take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what I have done as a private citizen. I've been very active in community boards within this community, and I spent a good deal of time working with a daycare center that was interested in doing a public-private partnership at the Belial School in the south end of Fall River. It was a proposal that was nearly unanimously supported by the neighbors in that area. It was a public-private partnership that gave back to the neighborhood the use of that school for meetings and theatrical performances. I did that as a volunteer, Mr. Flanagan. And in the end, we did not succeed in that, getting that building because of a flawed auction process by your corporation council. But I worked very hard on it, and I did it as a private citizen, despite working full time at a position which actually has me protecting national security. So I am very involved in my community. I am vested in this community. And I do a great deal of volunteer initiatives as I have done for over 30 years in this community. And I will not allow you to challenge my volunteer spirit. Whether I'm working with my own St. Anne's Neighborhood Association, United Neighbors, youth groups, or anyone else. I'm proud of Fall River, and I give back to my community. You're a rebuttal, Mayor. Mr. Ferraris, I want to commend you uh, for your community involvement here in the city of Fall River. The question was about the post office. The federal government is looking to close post offices within the city of Fall River, which means a decrease in services to our citizens as well as postal workers who are out of work who are going to be increasing the unemployment rate within the city of Fall River. Recently, there was a rally held at Government Center. I attended, Congressman Jim McGovern attended, postal workers attended, as well as private citizens in the community to rally around a cause to make sure that when the cuts come down, Fall River is not affected. And there's private citizens on a daily basis who step up to the plate to make this city a better place. And I stand with them side by side on a daily basis to ensure that they're making this city a better place. But Ms. Rivera's, once again, if you're gonna be running for the top position in the city of Fall River, you have to be involved. Thank you, Mayor. 
Audience, hold your applause until the end. We're almost there. Uh, again, we have about 10 minutes, well, 20 minutes left uh, in the debate. So we're getting up to our final questions. Please keep that in mind as you ask them. Uh, Mrs. Viveros, your question for Mayor Flanagan, please. Mr. Flanagan, in your campaign literature, you state that when I was a city council, the city of Fall River decimated public safety with massive layoffs in police and fire departments. Did you check my votes on this matter, Mr. Flanagan? And how is it you feel that you can make that statement in your campaign literature? Audience, no applause, please. Ms. Rivaris, I did check your votes. In fact, I have your voting record right here. Audience, please. As a city councilor in 2008, you adopted the education budget. As a city councilor in 2008, you voted to adopt the municipal budget. As a city councilor in 2008, you abstained from the EMS budget because you had a relative who was working for the EMS services. As a city councilor in 2008, you voted for the sanitation budget. As a city councilor in 2008, you voted to approve the water department budget. As a city councilor in 2008, you voted to approve the sewer budget, might I add, also cost us the rainwater fee. Now, audience, come on. With that budget, there was also an elimination of police officers. With that budget, there was also an elimination of firefighters. With that budget, there was also an elimination of teachers in the classroom. That budget caused layoffs within the city of Fall River. Layoffs um, in- Audience, I'm gonna- do, do I have to ask you to leave? I guess I do, sir. Please. Please, it's a, it's a privilege to be here, not a right, so I ask you to be mindful and respectful of the candidates. Thank you. Though that vote in 2008 caused layoffs in police, fire, DPW, and education, Ms. Rivera's. That was your vote. Mr. Flanagan, we are talking about the 9C cuts. Those are the ones that you allege decimated public safety. I voted against that budget. But more importantly, I took a very proactive approach. I developed over $2 million in alternative cuts that could have avoided the public safety layoffs that we experienced, that you talk about in your campaign literature. I worked extremely hard on a proactive basis. But Mr. Flanagan, we have a strong mayor form of government. And because of that, the city council does not get to decide where the monies go, what departments get those monies. The city council only gets to decide the total amount of the budget. It's the mayor who decides where those cuts shall be. But despite that fact, I was Thank a proactive you, counselor. Mayor Flanagan, your question for Mrs. Viveros. Mrs. Viveros, public transportation is vital to improving both our economic development as well as our educational system. Do you know the name of our bus management company? And what have you done recently to advocate for the extension of hours and the days of service Audience. for public transportation? Once the audience calms down, you can answer the question. Everybody good? Do they Thank need you. me to repeat it? I don't know, did she hear it? Do you know what the question is? Yes, I then do. Then please go ahead and take it. I didn't come here this evening, Mr. Flanagan, prepared to play Jeopardy. But, nonetheless, let me tell you about the bus service. When I was on the city council, I did attend community meeting. And in addition, I worked very hard in developing the master plan for the city of Fall River, the master plan that you have chosen to totally ignore. And we put in that master plan 
a program to address expanded bus service in the city of Fall River. But what's the name? <laughs> he asked what the name was, so you got to answer the question. I do not know the name, Mr. Flanagan. Gotcha. <laughs> do I have more time? You do. I do, okay. Nonetheless, I have followed that initiative. I do support extended bus service in the evenings and on the weekends, and it's the exact service that we in the city of Fall River were prepared to address as part of the master planning process. And had that master plan gone forward, we would have those expanded bus hours because we were forming a coalition of the nonprofit organizations within this community, and we were prepared to try to utilize those resources to provide those services within the community. We weren't sitting back waiting for someone else to take the initiative on that. I was a part of that, and I was prepared to implement it. And we would have succeeded and had that expanded bus service working today had I been elected mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Vera's audience. Got to say it again. Mayor, your rebuttal, please. Ms. Rivaris, I didn't come here tonight to play gotcha games with you. I've come here tonight to show that you've been absent for the last year and a half here in the city of Fall River. As our city has been going out to recruit bus management companies, we've been going out recruiting principals. We've been going out and fighting for services for our city. And while these fights have been going on, while these battles have been waged, you have been absent. Now, you've run against Mayor Rivera's. You've run against Mayor John Mitchell. You ran against Mayor Ed Lambert. You ran against Mayor Bob Carrere. And now you're running against me. Instead of running against the mayors of this city, why don't you try to work with them for a change? Audience, you know I can't allow applause. All right, so we're almost uh, up to our last question. Do I get, it's, do uh, I get... You want to you respond? I'll I'd allow like it. To. Audience, please, enough. Mr. Flanagan. Mm. Order please, in the court. <laughs> please, everybody. Please. Mrs. Viveros is going to respond to this question, and then we'll move on to our last question of the evening. Mr. Flanagan. For over 30 years, I have wanted to serve as the mayor of this community because I had a jobs plan that I thought would be good for our community, because I felt so passionate about education that I wanted the opportunity to serve. But regarding your statistics, this is the first time that I have challenged a mayor on rematch. And I am here tonight to challenge you again because of the Thank job you, you have failed to do. We're moving on to your question for Mayor Flanagan, please, Mrs. Viveros. Mr. Flanagan, you promised transparency in government when you were campaigning for the office. However, when it came time to form a sewer committee, you were all set to do it behind closed doors. You negotiated a backroom deal with the Indians for the biopark land and didn't even let key elected officials know what you were up to. And the list goes on. How would you rate yourself, Mr. Flanagan, regarding your transparency as a mayor? Pervaris, I've made mistakes over the last year and a half, and I readily admit that. Forming the Sewer Commission, originally the meetings were going to take place and not in a public forum. That was questioned. We thought it through, and those meetings were held in a public forum. As far as recruiting casino gaming here to the city of Fall River, some negotiations have to take place in certain venues. And when a developer is looking to come into the city, 
they may not want to be publicly known that they're looking to locate their company within the city of Fall River. This isn't unique to the city of Fall River. It happens in every city or town throughout our nation, happens in the public sector, happens in the private sector. These meetings were redevelopment authority meetings. They were public meetings, public input was taking place. And you constantly say that our pursuit of casino gaming in the city of Fall River cost us the biopark. Well, that simply is not true either. I disagree with that statement. Just two weeks ago, I toured the 300 acres of land with the president of the University of Massachusetts, as well as the chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. And as you drive by Route 24, those ramps are still being constructed. We did not delay the biopark project. I was always of the opinion our city could have both a biopark and a resort style casino. And why was I so passionate about getting a casino here to the city of Fall River? Because it was jobs. Jobs, Mrs. Rivera's. That's what this was all about. Jobs for people with GEDs right up to PhDs. Jobs for the people who go to the unemployment line every day. Jobs for the people who go to interviews and told there's no work for them on the interview they go on. Thank That's you, what that pursuit was about. Your rebuttal, Mrs. Viveros? Mr. Flanagan, it's time to be truthful with the people of Fall River. You put 245 acres of that park under agreement with the Indians. There was going to be no room for a bio park. It was the exact reason why UMass Dartmouth started looking for an alternate location. And I'm sorry to say, but you're at it again. The residents now in the Mohawk Drive area, the residents in the north end of the city, are fearful that you are behind closed doors negotiating a casino deal for their neighborhoods. Now I would ask you here tonight, as I've asked you before, those residents have a right to know whether their neighborhood is being considered for casino development. It wasn't legal the last time you tried it, but it's likely to become legal now. Why won't you rule out those neighborhoods for casino locations? Thank you, Mrs. Viveros. I will allow the discussion to continue, if you'd like, Mayor. Ms. Viveros, casino gaming has yet to be legalized in Massachusetts. However, if you follow the discussions and the debates that are occurring up on Beacon Hill, all signs point to that bill being signed this year. The bill allows for three gaming licenses here in Massachusetts. One in the greater Boston area, one in western Massachusetts, and one in southeastern Massachusetts. The one in southeastern Massachusetts, as the bill is currently written, is for a federally recognized Native American tribe. Thank you, Mayor Flanagan. Time is 7.54. That concludes our questioning for the evening. Uh, again, determined by coin toss, the first closing statement will be delivered by Mayor Flanagan. Mayor. I want to once again thank the Forever Herald News for hosting tonight's debate. And over the last several months, my opponent has made this campaign about me. I've never done that. And the reason why I haven't made this campaign about me is because I made it about you, the citizens of Fall River. I've made this campaign about the senior citizen who's fearful of going outside after the street lights come on. I've made this campaign about the single mother who sacrifices spending time with her children to work the double shift to put food on her table and to pay the rent. I made this campaign about the college student who goes off and gets their four-year degree but cannot find a job to come back and work with that degree with. I made this campaign about the middle-class family who sacrifices putting money away for their child's education in order to pay the mortgage to stop their house being foreclosed upon. That's what I made this campaign about. Every day I serve this city. I always try to put 
its best interest first. I'm working before the sun comes up and after the sun goes down. Working hard to bring jobs to our city. Working hard to improve education within the city of Fall River. Working hard to enhance public safety in our city. And I've admitted here tonight that I've made mistakes. And if I had an opportunity to hit rewind on some circumstances, I would. But when you're elected to serve as mayor of the city, there's no operator's manual. You have to use common sense and surround yourself with people who have the city's best interest, not special interest at heart. And that's what we've been doing over the last year and a half for our citizens. And I sought re-election to the office of mayor because I recognize there's still a lot more work to do. And I care about this city, and I care about this community. And I'm always trying my best to improve the quality of life for the citizens of our community. And we're about 14 days away from Election Day. And I'm here tonight to respectfully ask for your vote, to be given the opportunity to continue what we started to be given the opportunity to stabilize our city's finances, to grow our job market, an opportunity to continue to move our educational system forward, and an opportunity to continue to improve the quality of life for just not this generation, but future generations of our city. It's been an honor to be on stage here tonight, Thank and you, I respectfully Mayor. ask for your vote on November 8th. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Flanagan, audience, audience, audience. I'm, I'm allowing applause or, as the case may be, booing at the, for the final statements. So uh, thank you, Mayor, and the final closing statement will be thank delivered you. by Kathy Ann Viveros. Mrs. Viveros, your closing statement, please. This election is all about trust. You have to decide who you trust to drive, to advance, to improve the future of our city. I've been a manager in the private sector for a long time, and I've learned that nobody knows the job better than the person who does it every single day, day in, day out. I will bring respect for all the people that I will manage in this community. Respect for you, the residents of Fall River, for the employees of this community, and everyone, because that is the way we are going to raise the spirits within our community. One of the biggest things we confront is the sense of helplessness is a sense from people that it's never going to change in Fall River. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, give me that opportunity to restore faith in your local government and to restore that sense of trust that is so desperately needed if we are to turn our community around. Allow me to institute a new job creation and job protection strategy. Allow me to finally take care of our existing businesses, the people who are providing jobs within this community, because they've been taken for granted for far too long. Allow me to reach out to our municipal employees, to bring recycling citywide, to get suggestions from you and from them as to how we can rebuild our community. It's time for us to finally accept that we can do better, that we are better than this Fall River, that there is no good reason why we should have the highest unemployment rate in the state of Massachusetts, one of the worst crime rates in the state of Massachusetts, one of the lowest educational levels in the state of Massachusetts. We are good people, and I want to provide you 
with the leadership necessary to muster the forces, bring the talent and the resources throughout this community and beyond, together, working as a team with common goal and common purpose. And I believe with all my heart that we can make Fall River the truly great place that you and I know that it can be. I ask for your vote November 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Burroughs. Thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. If I could ask everyone to please just be seated for another moment so we can close up and conclude the debate. I'd like to th thank our candidates here tonight, Will Flanagan and Kathy and Viveros, for their spirited debate. Thank you all. Thanks also to the Fall River School Department for hosting us at, uh, at this beautiful auditorium. And thanks to our audience. We've had our rough moments tonight, but I appreciate your being here. And uh, a special thanks to our audience at home uh, for joining us as well. Now the ball's in your court. Remember to vote on Tuesday, November 8th. On behalf of all of us here at the Herald News, I'm Aaron Frechette. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.